Hi, this is Dave Edwards. Evernote introduced an update, 10.61.10. .10. Not just any update, it introduces Evernote's AI-powered search. And I had a chance to talk to Federico Simonato, the head of product at Evernote, about this new search function, and he even gave us a demo. That's coming up just in a moment. I want to remind you, though, that I do have an online course, which you might find interesting. It's called Evernote for Beginners. Now, whether you're brand new to Evernote or you've been using it for a while and just want to understand it better and use it more efficiently, you might want to check out this course. It's helped so many people already. Find out more about Evernote for Beginners at my website, DaveEdwardsMedia.com. Click on Courses. Okay, as I said, I've been playing with uh, the Evernote AI-powered search now for some time, and I really do like it. Uh, I initially had some questions about how it worked, security, and uh, you know how I could use it most efficiently. So Federico Simonato, the head of product at Evernote, uh, was kind enough to join me to uh, give us a little uh, explanation and demo. Yeah, I've been playing around with this uh, AI-powered search, and I've been having a lot of fun. I think it works really, really great. So Evernote is all in on artificial intelligence, I guess. First uh, AI cleanup, but now the power search. Uh, is that part of the overall strategy? Yeah, I would say um, that it's not a specific point of our strategy, uh, AI in general, but we identified some opportunities uh, on AI and the AI team at Bending Spoons is pretty strong. We have a pretty good platform for AI features. Um, and so that's, that was the most um, intuitive thing to do, no? Uh, we saw that, that um, the, the time was getting good, ripe for, for AI features. Uh, we could find a couple of them that, that were very useful for users. Um, plus, uh, we knew how to build them quickly and fairly well compared to, to what the market offers. And so we just thought, okay, hey, let, let's do it. Uh, at the same time, yeah, this is not necessarily what we want to do, what we want to like we don't want to pivot ever not to being an AI uh, product and we want to make sure that, that it stays reliable and, and good for uh, people who have all sorts of needs uh, like just even just storing notes uh, which is one of the most common sure I mean you don't have to use it if you don't want to use it I think that's part of the genius of the way it was designed exactly and, it could and the cool thing is that if you don't want to use it is it doesn't process your data which is pretty cool like it does it doesn't touch your data until you tell it to so yeah i want to talk a little bit about security a little bit later on but could you first sure. of all like just define i mean how is the power search different than the old fashioned search sure so um they are actually slightly overlapping at the same time um they are um both good for different um uh, things you know like let, let me make an example um Standard search relies on filters or more complicated like Boolean language, which is which is not very used because it's complex. Um, I, I, I probably, even though I don't, don't really know it too well, I use it rarely. Um, as, as a result, um, you get a list of nodes uh, that, that meet the keywords uh, and, or filters or other criteria that, that you use. Uh, so it's manual uh, and you still need to go th through the um, nodes to find specifically what you're looking for. What we um, envision for AI search is the experience that you have when you ask a question to a friend. Um, when you ask a question to a friend, you don't expect your friend to tell you, um, to dump all they know about a specific topic, you know, um, which is kind of what happens with standard search though. Um, what happens when you ask a friend a question is uh, they generally identify what they think is the best part of the information they know about the topic you asked for, and they just give a very short answer uh, about that. So we try to recreate that with AI search. Um, so basically it's a feature that goes just to the right um, point of your node that extracts the right three node, three lines of your node and, and give you those. And actually, uh, if we want to go even in more detail, uh, AI search, AI powered search does two things. The first one is this one I just told you about, like a direct question. Um, for instance, what's my workout plan for today? Um, and it's going to go look in my um, workout note where I have all my uh, monthly plan, and it's just going to identify the one for today. 
The other thing it does is a filter request. So you can play with the current filters that are available on Evernote, or you can also play with Boolean language um, through English, through your language. Um, so you, you basically just ask a question in English and it's gonna identify a list of notes that correspond to your, um, to your query. For instance, uh, show me uh, my notes with uncompleted tasks that were created in January, let's say. And so it, it, it translates this question, this query uh, into a set of filters like date January 1st to January 31st um, and filter uncompleted tasks. And it's only gonna show you those notes. Uh, I think I mean, I've got so many questions about how it works and all these other things, but maybe it would be helpful if you could just give us a little demonstration of it because maybe some people haven't seen it in action yet. All right, so when you, um in your Evernote account, uh, the first time you will see this uh, new badge here uh, that tells you that, that uh, AI powered search has been enabled for your account. Um, now, you can still do the, your standard search like you were used to, uh, and it still works and, it, and it's pretty good. You can filter by notebook, etc. At the same time, you can also uh, turn on AI powered search. If you don't ask it to uh, never show it to you again, uh, this pop up. Uh, you will al always see it when you switch from one mode to the other so that you'll always know that that you're actually um, giving some content to you're sending some co content to a third party um, llm um, basically the third party ai model now um, i can do a demo here um, for instance um, how do i submit a wellness reimbursement request Let's, let's see if it works with a typo too. Okay, so it identified the node where this information is contained in, and it told me to submit a wellness reimbursement request, you need to submit your eligible expense and receipts in Expensify, which is the correct answer. If I want, I can read more, uh, and it gives me uh, a lot more information. This is useful in cases where I don't just want those four or five lines, but I want a more um, detailed um, information. Now, this is the first kind, as we said, like there are two kinds of, uh, of AI search. Um, one is the one in which I just ask a question, I expect an answer. The other one is, um, for instance, we could ask, um, show me my um, notes with PDF files. What it does here, it translates this sentence into a uh, filter and it shows me all my notes with PDF files. For instance, this is a note with a PDF file um, that I have um, pinned from, that, that I have clipped from the, from the um, website. Um, the cool thing is that here it tells me that the search query used was contains file PDF. So I, if I want, I can go here uh, view results in standard search or copy paste the search query. Um, if I view results, it, it, it basically just uh, writes here uh, in the in the search bar exactly the, the query that it used to um, to identify this list, which is exactly what I asked for. So yeah, this is this is how it works. These are the, the two ways it can work. Now, of course, you can do all sorts of things with, with the filter uh, search. You can also put together multiple filters, like show me all notes edited after January uh, 2023 with the tag reimbursement, for instance, and, and it will know how to put them all together. What about languages? Is it only understanding the English language or does it does it do this in other languages? It, it, it supports a lot of languages. Um, I haven't heard yet of a language it doesn't support. Uh, the short answer is it supports all the language that um, the ChatGPT supports, um, which I, I don't know the number, but like hundred, a hundred or more. I, I don't know, like like they are a lot. Where do you see this fitting in? I mean, like, do you think um, you're going to continue to pursue more? You you outlined a couple of fixes that you're considering making already, or a couple of additions. But do you think that uh, we're going to see more AI related um, additions to Evernote? Is this part of a longer term strategy? So let me um, explain a little better why we worked on AI features, which, which I think is interesting to answer your question. Um, 
So let me answer first about AI search. So now our plan for the next many weeks is to just listen to feedback and try to prioritize the feedback we receive. So in case everyone tells us, uh, okay, this is great. Like we have little suggestions here and there. We might want to just um, leave it as it is, maybe improve performance a little bit uh, and do like more um, li little, little improvement. Instead, if we see that a lot of people ask us, for instance, what you asked me earlier is something that I already heard a few times is, um, please let, give me the ability to exclude an, a notebook or a note. Um, in that case, we might want to do another sprint to, to also uh, push out that, that improvement. Um, and this is about AI search. Now, about AI in general inside Evernote. Um, the reason why we decided to focus first on AI features is one, because uh, as we said, the, the time is ready for AI features and, and the way they, they work now is much better than they worked like even just a year ago or two years ago. Um, so this is the reason one. Reason two is, uh, as I shared, Bending Spoons has a, has a strong team about, around AI. Um, plus, what I didn't say earlier is that um, in this moment where when we are focusing 90% of our uh, effort on reliability, speed, and uh, general performance in the app. Um, this is basically all software engineering. Uh, whereas for AI features, a lot of the work is not just software engineering, but it's also uh, AI research, like finding the best prompt, understanding what models works best, um, and, and all sorts of stuff. Also, UX design it was pretty important because there is no such, such thing available in other note-taking apps, you know? So there, there was a lot of work to build this, this feature, AI, AI Power Search, for instance, that um, wasn't just software engineering. There, of course, there was also software engineering because we needed to uh, set up a backend uh, just for this. We needed to include this feature inside the, the clients. Um, but, but still, like, it was more limited compared to other features that, that we um, have in our list. So for now, priority, basically, the short answer is priority is on um, quality, speed, and, and and general performance um, but on the side we have ai which we can work on pretty efficiently without uh, stealing focus away from um, software engineering teams i've been in conversation with federico simonato the head of product for evernote at bending spoons and i thank him for joining me uh, today now i actually recorded a second uh, segment to this interview with federico in which we talked about some of the problems that Evernote has experienced in the recent past. Certainly you've heard there've been a lot of concerns and complaints about the way Evernote has been uh, operating. And, and he was very candid with me um, about uh, the problems and uh, where the uh, company is taking the Evernote product into the future. So that'll be in part two of my interview with him. I'll be posting that soon. Don't miss it. Please subscribe uh, to my series. I post uh, regular videos about Evernote, uh, usually on Mondays, sometimes at various points during the week as well. So uh, subscribe to the series of videos, so then you'll be notified about part two uh, when that is posted. Finally, I want to remind you, if you want to use Evernote to be even more productive, I have a course called Getting Things Done with Evernote. It shows you how to combine the best features of the GTD methodology within Evernote. It's a, it's a great course. It shows you exactly how to set up a system so that uh, you will work more productively. Find out more, daveedwardsmedia.com. Click on courses. Thanks for joining me today.